Hi, my name is Mick Bikamian. I'm director of Los Angeles Chess Club. This game was played against a guy who has illusions of greatness. He calls himself Great Carlini, and we have to tolerate that, unfortunately. So every now and then we get a chance to prove him wrong in some games, including this one. So he played e4 against me, and I played knight f6, and on e5, I moved the knight back to g8. This line, is, uh, line of Alkan is perfectly playable by black. The point is that white has pushed his pawn to e5, so black gets to have a French defense set up with a bad bishop on c8 out, as you will see in a few moves. So after d4, d5, obviously white has a little bit of space advantage thanks to his pawn at e5, but uh, as it turns out in the game, like I said, black will end up with a nice version of French. F4. The idea of this move is to gain a space ad advantage and eventually be able to play F5. So of course black wants to prevent black from playing F5. So first step is H5. And black is trying to control the light squares on white king side. F5, G4 squares. And like I said, white's goal is to be able to eventually play f5. And this next move, bishop d3, is exactly to do that. Now black is going to pressurize white's light squares on the king's side. So there that explains bishop g4 move. Obviously, it doesn't move the bishop back. That'd be loss of tempo. So let's see what he does. He is uh, completely surprised at this point and he played knight f3. Of course, the point of knight f3 is to be able to play h3 and hoping to win that bishop for his knight. And of course, black is prepared for that, and black now plays knight h6. The point of knight h6 is that if white plays h3, which I believe he does in the game, then black will be able to move his bishop to f5 and trade light square bishops, which clearly favors black because black would be trading his bad square bishop against white's good bishop. So there, bishop f5, bishops are opposed, and what are his choices? He can take or go back. Either way, black will play e6. If he takes, of course, knight takes. So he was puzzled at this point what to do and he decided to develop another piece. And now black will get to play e6. There it is. This is a setup that I was talking about earlier. Black has an advantageous version of French. You see this light square bishop on f5 is outside the light square pawn chain. That bishop is usually sitting at c8. So it's true that black gets a couple of tempi behind. But strategically, black will have the better position, better structure from this point on. A little bit cramped, but solid. So here, he castled, and it's black to play b6. The point of this move is to be able to play c5 at some point. So he played his own c4, striking light squares. Good move. So. Black trying to strengthen d5, play c6, and now he developed the knight c3 pressurizing. So he has some pressure on the queen side that black has to watch out for. After knight c3, black played h4. This, the point of this h4 is to eventually, after trading bishops, either by white or black, to bring the knight to f5 and possibly to g3 at some point. So. White has weaknesses on the king's side for the rest of the game. And this is where black is hoping to take advantage of for the rest of the game. Of course, he has some pressure on the queen's side also. So let's see how the game continues. C takes d5. He's trying to liquidate in the center and eventually to mobilizes pieces on the queen side. Black usually captures with a c pawn as I did. And now rook c1, same goal. a6 to prevent bishop b5 check or knight b5. 
So the game is uh, semi-open or semi-closed, any way you look at it. So it's his move now, and there are several good moves at this point. Trading bishops, queen e2 that he played was perfectly good move. Now, after queen e2, I trade bishops because that makes his queen e2 as a waste of move. So black gains a tempo here. And after queen takes knight f5, hitting the bishop, bishop f2, good, good square for the bishop. And now it's just a matter of continuing developing the pieces. So that explains this move, knight d7. It's white to play, knight a4. Like I said, white is trying to pressurize on the queen side. So he's eventually going to double rooks. I'm getting ready to castle, a3, with the idea of b4, b5, possibly. And now that the h1 is guarded twice, black can safely castle. But I figured this move f6 also weakens the central pawns. If he takes, I'll take with the bishop, and my bishop is on a good diagonal. If he doesn't take, I will take, and whether he takes with the e pawn, with the d pawn or f pawn, either one creates some small opportunities for black. So he's he's trying to double up rooks, and sure enough, I exchange that e5, and he's puzzled as to which as to which way he should capture. So he should should capture with the pawn, because if he takes with the knight. In case of knight takes f6, I have knight f6, followed by knight e4, fantastic outpost for the knight. So he captured with the f pawn finally. So as you notice, he played, touched the d pawn first, but then he moved the f pawn. It's okay because on the USCF rules, latest rules, it's not touch move anymore, it's touch clock. So he got away with it. But I made a little comment about that, and he made his own little comment. It's black to play now, and now that the F file is half open, or actually open, completely open, castling is good and safe. So I did that, and he doubled his rooks on the C file. So like I said, black is a little bit cramped, and he's trying to find some kind of counterplay here. That explains queen e8. With the idea of queen g6 and trying to create some accident on white's king's side. Now, this game has some resemblance to Dutch. If you notice, black has uh, opened the f file, and one of the typical maneuvers in Dutch is queen e8, queen g6, or queen h5. Very common. So, that's what I'm trying to do with this structure. Queen b3, this is a nice move. Not that he can take the b6 pawn, because on knight takes b6, I have rook b8, pinning the knight. But uh, he's also pressurized in d5. So here, I could have played my own b5, and after knight c5, knight b6, with the idea of knight c4, that would have been a great outpost. But I decided to continue with the attack on the king side with queen g6. And sure enough, he went to the seventh rank with the rook. Now I brought my f rook to the d8, and it's just a matter of uh, organizing myself before trying to launch an attack. Rook c6. Now he's trying to win the pawn on b6. It's a nice uh, centralization. One of the threats that he has right now, which I believe he missed during the game, was queen takes d5 pawn. And of course, if pawn takes, rook takes queen on g6. So let's see what it does. Here the position is difficult for black, so I have to be careful about what I have in here. So I finally played that b5 move to force him to make a decision with the knight. And I was expecting knight c5 but he played knight c3, and now I made some maneuvering against the rooks to see if he would misplace his rooks. Knight b8, so he pretty much only has one square for that rook, one safer square, and that is rook b6. 
and I wanted to dislodge the rooks from the C file. Now his goal is to double up on the seventh rank with rook b6, b7. It is my turn now. I have a host of different moves here. I moved the knight back and he made a comment. Uh, knight back again, what's the point? So he doubled up on the on the seventh and I had to bring the queen back to guard it because I couldn't move the knight. Should I move the knight, I would lose the bishop to two rooks. So he came up with a nice uh, tactics in here that wins him two pawns. Of course, as you can tell from the clock, I'm a few seconds ahead, almost uh, 20 seconds, but I'm counting one of the factors in blitz always is to count on the clock to win some time. So after a series of trades, so he won, at this point he's got his two pawns up. Now I'm trying to create some accidents on the C file, which is under my control now. So he's got a weakness on g3, rook c1 is coming. He's got his queen and rooks doubled up, but nothing they can do for the moment. With this pawn push, he's attacking my knight. My knight is hanging, so that explains this move, queen g6. And rook c1 is still coming, and he cannot prevent that. Around here, he starts going down on time and he spent a lot of time thinking what he should do. I am counting on the clock, hoping to win on time. It's not easy to come up with a good plan here for black. It's a difficult position. I always have that check on c1 and he either has to block or king h2. Queen e4. Okay, so what could possibly be the point of this move? So I finally gave that check on c1. Here he was puzzled whether he should block with the bishop or move the king up. He finally blocked with the bishop. And black to continue. Queen f6. The main point of queen f6 is to be able to defend the pawn on h4 with g5 at some point for good. So he got his king off the back rank and he was really undecided whether he should play this move or not. He spent a lot of time thinking and I reminded him that it was a touch move and he reminded me that I'm so touchy. So. He finally moved the king there. So as you see, I am about uh, almost 30 seconds ahead on the clock. There's so many tempting moves, including that bishop d6 check, but I finally decided to go with g5. Now I'm hoping to activate my king in some variations. Here, I believe he missed a move. He had bishop d2 at this point. And that would have forced, could have forced win my pawn on g5. Is bishop d2 playable move here? Well, let's pause. Bishop d2 would have failed to rook h1 check. King takes the only move and knight g3 forking the king and queen. So he didn't really miss anything. It was a trap that he didn't fall, fall for it. So he played queen g4 and he's hoping to check me in the back rank. And I believe this move was a mistake because now he drops the e pawn. That was a very important pawn. And the rook is under attack. Check with the bishop is in there. So there are so many possibilities. So he decided to win an exchange here. He gave up a rook for a bishop, and now he's going to win the knight also. But that ate up a lot of his time, and in blitz, you just can't afford to make this kind of a risk on the clock. So at this point, he ran out of time, and I call this flag. Yes. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the game.